Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is finally game day for the Dallas Cowboys, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited. We sit about four hours from now, kicking off, and I'm ready. I am truly ready. Well, actually, I'm not quite ready. I got to finish getting everything set up. I got that three foot long uh, a steak and cheese sub that I'm trying to put the eagles to shame uh up with and um i almost fell into the trap the trap being um the giants in washington um seeing bad dogs meltdown the second week in a row where he literally is just like this team has broken me um talking to rio you know our buddy who was supposed to be here yesterday he was supposed to be here, but I think he realized that this might not be the first game to come here for because he knew what was coming. He said it was because his in-laws were, were, were in town and that, uh, you know, they don't speak too much English and they're not really football fans. And, you know, and, and I was like, okay, okay, I, I get you, Rio. But I think it was he was scared and he knew what was coming. And listening to him melt down as a Washington fan ambassador, I think he's going to get fired. I, I honestly think that they're going to have to fire him because the things that he said on his channel, you know, I, I was going to actually do a troll video of those two guys. And I said, wait a minute, God, Mark, you know what? You could be them tomorrow. You know, let, let's just be cool. Let's just relax. Let's just stay out of the fray for right now. Let's just not do anything stupid. And, and even Philly 500, you know, he's been trying to egg me on today and stuff. Um, uh, he's been sending me pictures of his game face, although his game face, to me, uh, he looks like he's constipated. It's like he just ate too much cheese. What an idiot! What an idiot! I, I mean, seriously, he just looks like, ooh, that's your game face? Okay. All right. You say so. But I'm trying to stay out the fray tonight and see what happens with my team versus the Eagles. And it would have been easy to go through and do that, but but you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to relax and, and just get ready for this game. Now, as far as the guys, we all know who's out. We know who's in. We know the Eagles are losing, uh, you know, uh, the, the right guard and their left tackle. You know, uh, they lost their defensive end, uh, Grime. Uh, Graham, you know, and, and things, and we know all the players we got on COVID, and 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 uh, Demarcus Lawrence, and uh, Michael Gallup, and of course Keanu Neal. Whoa, dude, you know, and uh, uh, Donovan Wilson probably won't play as well. We know all this and stuff, but this is a division rivalry. This is you know the, the two of us together, and we're gonna see what we're gonna see. And sometimes crazy things happen. Now, Dak Prescott did an interview with Rich Eisen, um, and, and I want to play this because this is interesting because Rich Eisen asked him about uh, getting paid and the pressure that you know comes with that, and also about uh, Jerry Jones and dealing with Jerry Jones on the contract, and also what it would mean to hold up a Lombardi. So let's take a listen to that right now. I've you know been around this a long time, Dak. You know uh, I've seen athletes who get paid, or in your case, piz aid, and it's it's a Pizzade. pressure that um, that they're constantly trying to live up to it. I wonder what you think about that idea, Dak. Yeah, I mean I've never played this game for money. Um, I've never wanted to make it to the NFL for the money. It was always about playing the game I love and doing it at the highest level against the best men there are in the world. So. Um, that, that's that's continued to be my inspiration, motivation every day when I wake up is being the best of the best. And it has nothing to do with what the paycheck is or what this position um, gets paid. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's, that's obviously great and it's obviously a blessing and it's a generational blessing. But um, that has plays no factor in my mind or any factor in what I wake up and do. That said, um, avoiding somebody like Aaron Donald or negotiating with <laughs> Jerry Jones, which one is tougher? Yeah. Uh, I'd say I'd, I'd say worrying about Aaron Donald. I mean, I have great people that that I trust, and obviously, I trusted the Jones and the Cowboys organization and getting a getting a deal done. So um, I didn't put a lot of energy and focus into that. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I just believe and had faith that I'd be here and trusted trusted my team and trusted them. And um, obviously, they, they got me a great great deal. They sure did, Dak. I, I, I you know when I interviewed you at the Super Bowl before the 2020 season. 
uh, after the 2019 season. And I talked to you, and I told you the story DeMarcus Ware once told me that Jerry Jones, when he really is getting ready to sign on the dotted line, he calls you into his office with no agents, lights some votive candles, you know, and, and, and just stares at you and asks you if you want to be a Dallas Cowboy. Did that ever happen to you, Dak? Did that moment happen um, with you? Maybe not exactly that scenario, but we had a few office visits, um, and they were always great. But um, they, were, they were just really communicating um, at that point what both sides were moving towards and what both sides wanted. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Steven and Jerry uh, hashed it out with my agent Todd France, and that was all on them, and I give them credit. Okay. Um, I just got a call from Todd, and then later, about a couple hours later, I was in, in the Jones's office hugging and um, knowing that I had a future. That is. Were there no candles then, is what you're saying? No votive yeah. candles? No candles. There wasn't candles, but there was lots of smiles. <laughs> I like it. Dak Prescott here on the Rich Eisen Show. How jacked are you? Seriously, like uh, that, that, that this is happening to you in your life. I mean, what if I had told you, you know, what's the snap cut to eight years ago? Hmm. What's going on right now in 2021 for you? What would you have said, Dak? Uh, very humbly, um, I probably would have would have believed you just on the fact of um, the expectations and the way and the standard that I hold myself to and um, just everything that's happening in my life, uh, I want it to happen. Um, and, I, and I wake up every day trying to hold myself accountable to be the best player and the best person and the best I can be in whatever roles required. Uh, and I've been that way for, for a long time and I've only grown. And everything that's happened in my life has allowed me to grow more. Uh, and I'm just thankful, thankful to be where I'm at, thankful to be at a great organization with great teammates, great coaches, and great people around me that uh, continue to push me. And I just know everything's going to uh, continue to go up. And what would it mean for you to grab that Lombardi trophy hold it up and uh, hand it to Jerry Jones. Yeah, it mean everything. Uh, I play this game because I want to be a winner. I want to be a champion. And as I said, I, I've always dreamed about being in the NFL to play with the best of the best, but to be the best amongst them. And that's what that Lombardi Trophy does. And I think it's important for um, not only just the one I want to get, I want to get there, but for the Cowboy fans and for this organization. Um, I think they deserve to be back there, and that mean everything. Yeah, Jerry told us last year that uh, after. Before the Super Bowl, where they won their third, he told the he said he's prayed to the Lord and said, "If you give me this one, I won't come asking again." But he's ready to redo that deal, is what he said. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see that. We're going to go get. We're going to try everything that we can do, and be our best each day to go get him this. Uh, to go get him another one. Amen on that one. All right, so that's Dak Prescott speaking about what it would mean to get that Super Bowl trophy, about the contract and the money that he's never played for the money that's not what motivates him you know this is like a band of brothers and this is an opportunity because as you looked around the nfl this is literally a week-to-week -week league and you know as good as some teams look right now and like i was on the phone with rio today i was like look dude you're only three games in on the season some of the teams that look great right now may be ass by the end of the season. We started out a few years ago 3-5 and five and looked completely lost, turned it around and got on a run and ended up beating Seattle in the first round of the playoffs. You don't know what you don't know. But this is an opportunity, again with the Cowboys in, in the spotlight, to send a message to the NFL that we are better than what you thought we were and an opportunity for some of these guys who – are, are getting a chance to play because of COVID, because of injuries, to start making a name for themselves and an opportunity for this team to start etching themselves in all of those great Dallas Cowboy teams. The thing about it is your opportunities and your time is very short-lived. And just as we are sitting here and it's almost October, the speed of which this, this year has gone by the same is true about your time playing football. Sometimes there are no tomorrows, which is why you've got to make the most of it today. And I'm going to leave you guys with this and hope that you guys tune in tonight. Uh, we'll probably be kicking off about 7 o'clock, 7.30. I'm not sure what time I'm going to. I've got a lot to do between now and then, but it may start. I may start to stream about 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll see. But I hope you tune in. We'll definitely be knee-deep in it by 7.30. And we'll be going through the whole game with our exclusive Philly 500 Meltdown Cam. <laughs> oh, big run! Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, shit. He still fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, uh, 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 now he's about to lose his mind. He hasn't seen the play yet. He hasn't seen the play yet. 
Please tell me a lie.